What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my first impressions for Sumerian 6, a stealth tactics game, as well as an indie title from developer Artificer. Artificer are actually the developers behind Shogunners, a TRPG from 2023 that I really enjoyed, which is naturally what I'm doing taking a look at this game, which coupled alongside the fact that I would say like the studio making stealth tactics games, me, me, me games, recently shuttered their doors, a dev making things I like, trying to fill that niche is naturally of interest to me. Now that said, Sumerian 6 here uh, officially releases on September 2nd. That is, of course, possible that I'm bringing you this video because they gave me a review key a little bit early. The embargo officially lifted on August 28th, but I've been a little tied up with other reviews and I'm hoping to get this done before its official launch date, but ultimately we shall see. But what is this game all about? Now, story-wise, we take on the role of the members of Enigma Squad. Enigma Squad initially started out as a science team who came together during an alternative history around the time of World War II, having discovered a super material, something that gives infinite energy, basically. Now, this proved to be a very dangerous substance, however, which led to the groups disbanding with one of them, who was injured in a blast, joining up with the Nazis to use their resources to push this sort of wonder substance out into the wider world and really discover its true potential. And that true potential just so happens to be empowering and mutating people and turning them into either horrible monstrosities or giving them basically nothing short of superpowers like some of our characters. So naturally, it's our goal to stop them. But let's talk about the structure of this game a little bit. So this looks to be a level-based stealth tactics game where there are ultimately 10 levels, but they are very large overall. One of them took me like an hour to clear on its own. And each of those levels is divided up into three difficulties, easy, normal, hard, as well as coming with a bunch of different challenges. Now this is especially important because one thing that I'm actually not a huge fan of is that each of these levels individually requires only specific characters that you've met up in the story to that point. So while it is extremely unlikely, I do kind of hope after I finish the game they'll let you play them with anyone, but given the challenge nature of some of these missions, I highly, highly doubt that. But it would certainly be nice if it was possible. But being a stealth tactics game, what is this all about? Well, as the name would imply, stealth tactics, of course. But basically this means we're going to be using our up to six different characters and their individual powers to overcome, of course, enemy forces and disable them, preferably as stealthily as possible. Which is where, of course, the actual gameplay comes in. So, right away, every character I've encountered so far has had a really fun move set that utilizes some interesting powers. So the first guy you get has basic abilities, like, you know, just a knife for stealth, and then a gun if the environment demands, but also has the ability to, what the game calls hitchhike, basically possess an enemy, and as they walk along their set path, you can jump off at any point, allowing you to, say, bypass groups of enemies. Another character just straight up gets an invisibility cloak that only drains when you're moving. The next character, Rosa, has a suite of chemicals that she uses to dissolve bodies and also turn enemies into human bombs, as it calls it. But she's great at dissolving bodies and stuff so you don't ever have to deal with trying to hide them so they don't get discovered. But following on from that, you then get access to what is effectively a werebear. The werebear is great for taking out stronger enemies that typically have to be attacked more than once or with two people, but he can do this by himself. This, however, comes at the cost of stealth. While in bear form, he cannot hide and thus getting around uh, enemy movement cones and stuff becomes more demanding. So just right away, I'm really enjoying the cast of characters here, as well as their powers that are available to each of them, because while some of them do in fact feel extremely overpowered, they all have very specific uses, and combined with, I would say, very deeply layered sets of enemies and guards and patrols and stuff, you still have to use those overpowered abilities in very strong and tactical ways in order to make the most of both the battlefield and the characters themselves. Now this includes enemies like basic soldiers, which basically just have a vision cone. There are officers who are immune to your more mind-affecting abilities. There are panzer wolves, which are the big heavily armored guys. I've also encountered geists, which are teleporting enemies bound by a sort of generator for their powers. And then the game also seems to have this like element of the occult about it, like some of the side stories and things it mentions to the side. So I imagine when I get towards the end of the game, there are other more occult-esque things to be beheld. 
which I think is going to be fun. Now, another thing I thought was interesting because of the level-based structure of this one, when it comes to progressing each of these characters, every single one of their abilities has like an experience and a level associated with it. So every time that character kills enemies or uses those abilities to take down enemies, they get experience for that, which fills that meter. But you can also find like specialty experience boxes for that specific character that if you can of course solve the challenge and make it too they get a huge boost to their experience and you also get extra experience for clearing things like the optional objectives as well as the challenges associated with each mission so there is a little bit of progression and this does things like simply make your abilities work at larger ranges or reduce the amount of noise you cause etc so all in all to bring this video to a close and save some stuff for the review i would say that as a stealth tactics game i'm really enjoying it they seem to have really nailed exactly what that was all about with a pretty high level of detail but as I move forward with this one, I have a feeling that enemy variety and just level variety is going to be a little bit on the low end side, judging by the fact that I feel like I'm pretty far into this game and I'm only on like level 4 of 10. But a short and sweet fun experience isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially following all these recent AAA games I've been taking a look at and will be taking more of a look at later this month. So a nice little palate cleanser isn't necessarily a bad thing. But I think that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. I hope you guys are looking forward to the review for this one. I'm hoping to have it done on Monday. It just kind of depends. My weekend's a little packed with other stuff as well. So I'm not sure how long it will take me to get through this one, but it really shouldn't take more than a couple of days. But in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Let me know how you feel about this one down in the comment section below. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.